Content warning. Mentions of animals being hurt. What are your hobbies? Uh... <laughs> back to Oasis 2. I mean, the overheard and unisful podcast. Uh, I'm John, here with my good buddy Cam, as always, except when he's not here. And also, this week's guest, Fiona. Hello. Say hi. Oh, fuck. You fucked it. Shit. Fuck. Uh, what's the story, Morning Glory? Was I supposed to make an Oasis reference? Is that what I fucked up? Um, you both were, actually. I, everyone is supposed to make an Oasis reference every single time they come on this, sh- this show. Um, I've only heard like two Oasis songs. You kind of shit out of luck there, bud. Uh, what what are they? Um, Wonderwall and Don't Look Back in Anger. Both what? excellent songs. Cam, you've been on a lot of this podcast and haven't made many Oasis references. I'd like you to sing the entire of Wonderwall for us right now to make up for it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm boy. You've got me on a bad evening. I tried my best to see. Like, I was like, how long can I go before saying anything in this podcast? Did you really. I it, it turns out. out it's like less than a minute by a long way. Um, yeah, so Oasis actually uh, was one of the like you know I don't know how how universal this is anymore because the the fucking like ten years older than everyone I am now breaks it. But uh, Oasis, uh, Morning Glory by Oasis, that album, yeah, was one of the like car albums my dad had. Huh. So I actually listened to quite a bit of Oasis as a kid. Yeah, same. Big, big fan. Same. Um, yeah. Because well. I downloaded Spotify in 2017 to listen to music while playing Titanfall 2, and What's the Story of Morning Glory by Oasis was maybe like the first or second album I ever listened to on Spotify. Hmm. I was just browsing it. I so. Yeah, I can't really listen to albums. Fair enough. I'm a big album it. listener. I like to listen to the whole album. Um, a lot of newer albums just aren't written to be listened to, to like that, though. Yeah. Mm. It's just partly yeah. because of Spotify. Yeah. Spotify is the root of all evil. Spotify is the root of many evils. Um, yeah. They uh, gave Joe Rogan money. They give... Well, they don't give us money because we're not on Spotify yet. Cause I have, oh, I yeah. Once we're on Spotify, they'll be fucking... We'll be w- raking in Once bucks. we're on Spot, <laughs> Every single episode <laughs> Look out, Joe Rogan. One. Once we get on there, it's over for you. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, Come watch the your Joe fucking Rogan back. Money. I, I, I tried... I was thinking of making, like, Joe Rogan jokes... Uh, when Joke his Rogan. podcast stuff started coming out, and then I was like, I don't really want to. You have to actually like become familiar with the material to reference it. Yeah, I think the only no, thing we are similar fine. to Joe Rogan is that one, we are a podcast, and two, we are soon to have shirts of that say "Overheard in Unis for podcast" on them with like. Oh, for real? Yeah, this is news definitely. to me. Huh? Okay. That with you know the Joe Rogan podcast shirt. No, again, I, well, I'm I'm just sitting here with the words Joke Rogan in my brain. The ones and with Sonic as as the know. Hedgehog and Shadow the Hedgehog. Yes, the ones with Shon- Sonic and Shadow the Hedgehog making out on it that says Joe Rogan Podcast. Okay. I'm I was thinking we it. could have that, but like something else on it. I'm painting a picture in my brain. Um, I'm of- not very good at art, John. <laughs> <laughs> very broad strokes. Something can be knocked up. We're not actually making t shirts. What? Yet. Aww. Cam, do you want to get on making t shirts? Um, I mean, I've I've designed a t-shirt before, or at least the bit for one. Uh, I think what we should do is we should have a Overheard in Eunice for official Jackbox night, where we only play TKO, and then we designate one one of the t-shirts to be... Is official merch? Is the yeah. official merch. Um, I think that we should, at random, just kidnap one of our listeners and be like, which of your shirts that you have is your favourite? I think we should... I think, and then that's the shirt. I think we should round up all of the guests that's at the really time. That's a shirt. All of the guests it at the time. I was looking at the skeleton. <laughs> I see a skeleton and I'm on board. Can't, can't, can't what his priorities are. Uh, we ran up all the guests. We don't tell them what for. We just say, hey, would you like to hang out? They all get there. We Hunger Games style. They have a battle royale um, nah, see, to that's... see who wins. And then whatever shirt they're wearing at the time is the, the shirt. The issue is one, the blood stains, And two, that's how we got them onto the podcast. They're savvy to it now. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Uh, we do just ask people, um, hey, would you like to be at the club room at this very specific time? Um, bring wired headphones, by the way. They're like, oh, there's no, there's no, this, this there's seems nothing normal. suspicious yeah. about this. 
and then we sit them down and we lock them in the chair and they um they record the podcast how does it yep. feel to be <laughs> how does it feel in those in those iron shackles there ain't much give in these shackles bud i am not going anywhere you're going to the, record a fun podcast shackles. with your friends yep whether you like it or not <laughs> someone's got to someone's got someone's got to do do the hard work yeah, I mean, I put up a good fight, but you know, two versus one. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a fighter. I'm I'm barely observing my surroundings. What are you then, a druid? No, don't do this to me. What's wrong? Classes. I played a game. I'm going to D- engage I you pl- in class warfare now. I, I played a game of D and D a couple weeks, a couple days ago. Um, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Cam. Ah, look, it happens. We've all been there. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Sometimes you just have a bad day and you indulge yourself in a game of D&D. Sometimes you just lose focus and you end up in a consensual D&D relationship. Yeah. Sometimes consensual D&D workplace relationship. Uh, oh, God. It was a good, fun game. Um, I don't know. I, Look, I feel the, game, like, the best I game's have feelings, the one that you can be I have in. feelings about that game. Mostly, yeah, I have feelings about that game. Um Mostly that I, I keep trying to do things with my character, but the other players don't really... They, they don't want to follow my story. So they're just... I don't know, I feel like I'm being dragged along a little. The curse of collaborative storytelling. The curse of collaborative storytelling of... I am, my, I am desperately trying to tell my story, but the other players are not having it. Um, anyway, uh, what ended up happening is we ran... Hold on, it sounds like you're about to tell your story. I think we should uh, pivot there. No, I'm sorry, you go. <laughs> uh... We we were in a snowy wasteland, uh, and the only way we got out was by taking magical drugs, and now we're in the Feywild, apparently. That sounds like a normal one. Yeah, pretty normal. But Just... I we ran away from my 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 cl- player characters like home country and faction because we stole a giant sword, um, and he wanted I wanted to like explore my character's interactions with his parents who he hasn't seen in ages and this nation he was exiled from and how he wants to change it but he also loves it at the same time like he's patriarchal but also like wants to change things um but also at the same time he's he also hates this other nation but kind of doesn't like i had things going on and then the other characters are like we're stealing the sword, um, um, and we're leaving. Where you either come with us or you you're you're going. And I'm like, well, I'm half convinced you're about to reveal that this is like the plot of Morbius or something. <laughs> there hasn't been a single Morbius in this. No, I, yeah, I think no. We mentioned Morbius like with with uh, Jackie and um, and Amelia, right? No, we didn't. I swear the word Morbius came up. No, the more word Morbius, I would have remembered. Yeah, that's fair. But yeah, the the other players were like. We're going now. You can. You're either. You either come with us, or we're just leaving you there. And it's like, my options either to make a new character or like just stop doing the thing my character wanted to do. It's like, or I wanted to do with the character. It's like there are no good options here because I really. Yeah, like sometimes my you just gotta leave. Yeah. That's unfortunate though. That's that's like you know they they're not really taking care of you there. Yeah. Which is not you know you deserve to have your fucking character story told as well. Yeah. <sighs> it's okay. <sighs> there will be other games anyway, in better systems. I I like that game mostly just because our DM does a good job at mm. like having those stories. I was talking to him and I'm like, you're like the reason this game's fun for me. Hmm, um, that's nice. Sorry D&D for playing D&D. game that I am in at the moment is most the current main source of entertainment is one character has a horse and it's blue. Fuck yeah! It's and blue. it's no, that's a whole. It bit. kind of fluctuates between being average horse sized and being extremely unnaturally long. He long has, horses are always fun. He has become the long boy, but how he do it? What? <laughs> that's I'm a, waiting a, for a, it to be some kind of incredibly after. serious character mystery, but I don't think it is. No, it's just a long blue horse. Yeah. My favorite D and D bit was I ran a one shot once, and I, uh, I they threatened like this this character this random villager and he ended up giving them his favorite his valuable little liquid um i don't oh, know yeah. what it was called i think i know which one you're talking about you weren't there cam i i can make a guess he gave like a tin of this uh Ugh. 
sacred liquid with a fancy name yes. and they were like <laughs> a tin of what like bean juice oh no, no it, was, it was his special liquid <laughs> it was pineapple juice but the, it took them it, it was very funny when they're when they've got this i can't remember what the name was it was very long and silly though uh and they were like wait is this just pineapple juice and i'm like yeah pineapolis juice pinna peoples Pina- from the great state of mine apples <laughs> where what where, where is isn't it where is massachusetts Somewhere it's in, in Massachusetts, America. bud. <laughs> what? That's where it is. Where's? It's like saying, "Where's Earth?" It's there. It's where it is. Where's Minneapolis? Minneapolis. <laughs> where's? I'm not helpful. <laughs> uh, Who what's... the hell knows anything about American geography? No, I know. I know absolutely. some stuff. I know stuff. Clearly, about... you don't. Nerd. I'm not. I'm not wearing this U- America location. I'm not Noah. wearing my Utah Rock shirt. Yeah, which means that you can't cheat. So right now we could prove you don't know. Oh, that's that's the Redwoods. They're in a location in America. Utah is like the worst place to know things about. There's Mormons there. Ugh. Brandon Utah. Sanderson's a Mormon. Yeah, he does is be he? a Mormon. Yeah, he is. A lot of people are Mormons because it, America's a big place. Uh, what's I the, feel like getting into, getting into the Mormon. Mormons seems like a bad play <laughs> yeah. right now, um, but that's fine. We could do that at some point. There are a million and one like true crime genre podcasts about Mormons. Yeah, I bet. Oh god. Um, all Actually, right. oh, you're good. the other good tabletop game bit. This is in the root RPG. I was going to ask you about the root RPG. How's that going? It's going well. One of our characters is a naked mole rat, and his whole Someone bit... Someone got some clothes on that guy. Yeah, a mole rat with pants. <laughs> he does have pants, but his whole well, bit... Well, he's just a mole rat, then, isn't he? Yeah. Well, his whole bit is that because he is a naked mole rat, he looks like an extremely fucked up rodent, and so yeah. basically he just pretends to be an extremely diseased mouse or rabbit or whatever species of rodent is convenient at the time okay He's oh. we did yeah, run into a regular guy another but he N- disfigured yeah we ran into an npc who was a porcupine who actually did clock him for what he was and he was like oh we gotta get away from him because he's a con artist <laughs> x that's really funny fun What's fact about naked mole rats their teeth can move independently of each other i hate that fact um i hate it too growing. that's why i'm telling you What's the con? Um, basically, just like he is. In- I am incredibly sick. Please help me. Please give me things. Yeah, look at me. My face is melting. My I have no fur. Is- I- oh shit! Sorry. No, you're good. I have no fur. I have no ears. Take pity upon me, please. Fun fact about naked mole rats: I'm pretty sure they're like the least fertile species of all time. The uh, they've got like they have very long lifespans. Yeah, but they just can't produce offspring very well huh that explains what i was at the royal show and there was a one of the in like a little plastic dome there was uh this family uh of mole naked mole rats apparently they're the only family of naked mole rats in western australia i imagine the other part of that would be like quarantine regulations they had a funny name to public nudity laws they had a funny name uh, to which i can't remember but it it related to them being the only naked mole what's that did they have like rodent-sized nuts no. Have you ever seen like an unfixed like male rat or mouse? I honestly probably not. Probably not its nuts. No. Yeah. I um, feel like you would have if you'd seen one the huge. Okay, oh, I'll uh, believe you on this. Cam, Cam, yeah. we're gonna do a state capitals of the U.S. Um, quiz. You, I'm gonna tell right, you. I'm gonna state right now that all the capitals are pretty shit. <laughs> Capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D, capital E. <laughs> That's as far as I know. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the name of a state capital and in the U.S. and you're gonna need to tell me what state it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, number one, Frankfort, not Fort. Fort. <laughs> I don't think that's real. <laughs> uh, I am gonna go with uh, fucking West Carolina. No, it's Kentucky. West Carolina. That's not a state. Well, yeah, it is. They've got other Carolinas. Why wouldn't they have West? <laughs> they only have North and South. What about West? They only split it in half. Tell me Carolina's two-dimensional, you son of a bitch. Carolina. West this Carolina is how I find out. is sitting right next to Arkansas. Like, just look at the map. It's right there. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere um, north of Kansas. 
Okay, let's get some more. Uh, where? What about? Uh, uh, That's a that weird a, name for a city. That was a funny one. I want to. Uh, I want to go in a bit about uh, role Albany game design. Oh, Albany. Yeah. That's just south of here. Is that no, going to be no, like Albuquerque or some shit? Yeah, Albany's in uh, fucking... It's it's in Western Australia, John. No, it's in New York. No, there's only one Albany, dude. Albany is the state capital of New York, as opposed to New York City. No, you're Get wrong wrecked. about this. There's only one place called each thing. You think you're so superior Perth, Scotland York. is fake. This is the only Perth. Okay, Um, what, what state has the state capital? Richmond. That's like Ohio, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that's also an Australian <laughs> state, but this time for real. Uh, it's Virginia. Oh. Okay, what about Olympia? Virginia's my grandma. Olympia? Yeah. That's definitely in Greece. Nope, it's in Washington. Yeah, which is where the movie Greece it's is set. I was Cap- right. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where Greece was set. <laughs> uh... What, what about boys? You're really going to keep doing this? Yeah, that's in a- Idaho. Fuck. I know where that is because that's in a Harry right. Shapin song. Nice. Okay, we got the... What about Springfield? Uh, that's in New Jersey. Pennsylvania? No. Uh, Illinois. Uh, that's um, the old Jersey. Oklahoma City. Ohio. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Do you want to take another guess? The moon. Another guess? No. <laughs> Not a state. Um, what was actually, the question? I'm going to say uh, it's not Oklahoma. You chose the exact wrong answer. It's Oklahoma. Jeez, they have no fucking imagination. We're what, brain full on Maine. What state, which is state? what state is the capital Columbus? I'm Idaho? Gonna, can we... <laughs> I'm, I'm having too much fun, Cam. Okay. How about we have a different conversation without John and his state things? Just take one guess. Idaho. Sneeb. <laughs> take, come on, it's I'm, Columbus. I'm, no, I, okay, I believe you. <laughs> I didn't know Columbus was a state. No, it's it's the capital. The, the name of the capital is Columbus. What's the name of the state that it's a capital of? <laughs> John, I don't, I don't go there. <laughs> John, I have no intention Ohio. of approaching America. Ohio. It was I th- Ohio? Yeah, I thought you'd get it, because it's Ohio. Okay, because I was like, I'm pretty sure Columbia's a country. <laughs> oh, d- dude, you, you were trying to like give me hints as if I was like, if it was easy, and I'm like, no. I was saying Ohio by accident most of those times, John. Yeah, well, I thought... <laughs> John, I'm stupider than you expect, at all times. <laughs> Other people don't know things about America, I'm sorry if to say. If you know a state capital of America, let us know. <laughs> if you know a state capital of America, please DM you may be John to personally. Please, please, please DM Merlin uh, to the state capitals. Don't do that to Merlin. Why would you do that to Merlin? <laughs> I think it'd be funny. You're a menace. <laughs> Cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah, oh, like, what did Merlin like from do? the Slammer? Like from the US Constitution. They banned it. The oh. Slammer is a. It's I thought you, you were an American fan. When you're extra angry I am, about crimes. I, I, I'm, don't even know the constitution uh really can't I, even eat without crops <laughs> the constitution's at least 10 at least 10 zero modifier the slammer was a uh that i just referenced was a kids tv show like a british kids tv show and the premise was um it was uh it was a jail for people who had crimes against entertainment um and the only way you get oh, out so was, england <laughs> the only way it was said in England, the only way to get out was to do a show to a group of kids who would then choose one person to be released. Uh, and there was like a side segment where someone could do something uh, and they would either get a bonus or they would get a cruel and unusual punishment. Which, I guess this is why it was in England, because they couldn't have it in the US. Um, and the... the this the is reason- what happens when you base governance on convention. You get cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah. Uh, there was there was a reoccurring guy who uh, was a really shit uh, ve- ventriloquist. He was constantly trying to get out, and the catchphrase... Imagine being a recurring character on that show. How sad. He was like the main... Well, not the main character. There, well, the other recurring character was like the warden. Jesus. Uh. That's grim. <laughs> he was like a... 
I mean, English like, kids TV shows were like that. There was like Grizzly no, Tales for Gruesome Kids oh, and stuff Grizzly like that. Oh, Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. Welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. For lovers of Squeam. Uh, uh, the Slammers... That's a good shit. The, the Slammers... Uh, catchphrase the slammers. was, okay. if you can't... If you can't s- dance, sing, or rhyme, don't do the crime. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess... <laughs> It had a banger intro, too. Um, I'm going to believe you on this one. Search it up. <laughs> Send the Slimer intro to Cam. I'm I'm getting upset now. I was going to say it to Merlin again, but I thought you'd get actually yeah, no, upset. I'm glad that you sent it to me, but also, why are you doing this? I think it's funny, Cam. Why would you do this to us? Everyone needs to go out and find the most nostalgic ABC Kids TV show and DM the OP to John. Uh, please do, actually. Like, unironically do that. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Tiny Planets, go to John. I want everyone to send Rocky John and a the picture Dodos, of John. A, a really zoomed-in picture of under their fridge. I'm pretty sure there's porcelain shards under my fridge. Yeah, <laughs> and John should see them. That's what he deserves. Please send John porcelain shards. Don't send John porcelain <laughs> shards. This is what you asked for. Fiona, the one thing you mentioned when I asked if you wanted to be on this podcast was Red Wall. What is a Red Wall? Um, Apart from, like, some probably some metaphor to do with Soviet Russia. It is absolutely not that, I'm afraid to say. Um, Red I mean, Wall is a series of books written by Brian Jakes between 1986 and 2011. And it's sort of like one of the sort of, like, spiritual granddaddies to things like Root and Mouse Guard in that it's... Mm. Woodland critters doing terrible things to each other, but there's also some great descriptions of food. It's a, a, a higher age audience version of Warrior Cats, and I mean this completely oh, ironically. It's like Warrior Cats, but not for babies. Yeah. Nice. It's Warrior Cats with opposable thumbs, honestly. Yeah, a little bit. Like... Those little mice wear pants. Horrible things also happen in Warrior what Cats. What is the worst thing that happens in Redwall? Snakes. On yeah, a plane? Um... <sighs> When all of your characters are small rodents, one of the, snakes are a big deal. Yeah, one of the major villains in like the first book, Redwall, is a snake. But um, one of the minor villains in Redwall, Chicken Hound the Fox, gets bitten in the face by a snake and permanently disfigured. And then in the sequel book, he is the main villain and he falls down a well and dies because he's evil. That's how it be. Redwall is game. full of bioessentialism. If there is a um, a character oh, yeah. who's ostensibly good, who is a any kind of like carnivore, basically, like except for an otter. Otters get to be good, but if you're a ferret, you're evil. Yeah, There's weasels one... evil. Weasels evil. There's also like one pl- the plot of one book, the Tagarong, is literally a young otter gets kidnapped as a baby and raised by vermin, but because he is an otter, he is inherently good, and so he. Becomes yeah. good. Huh. The inverse also happens. A, like, ferret gets raised in Redwall, but then they turn out to have been evil the whole time. They would, It's just inherent in you. In the Mouse Guard game I was in, I killed a snake. I was the coolest motherfucker there ever was. Fuck. Captain yeah. of the Mouse Guard. We ran away Captain. from a bear in the Root RPG, because... Bears are huge. Absolutely the right play. Bears ain't nothing to mess with. Bears are a fucking... Like, that's not even a creature to fight. That's a force of nature at that scale. Yeah. I mean, that's what they I are, mean, basically. They're like trolls. It's a force of nature at human scale. Yeah, it's You're, like a, it's you like start a mountain with... in, 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 like, at the scale of being a mouse. It's like, that's not, like, that's a terrain feature. It's like, co- pitch, cool of Cthulhu, but you're mouse creatures. And, like, bears are, like, the Cthulhu creatures. Or humans are. Humans I feel are. like humans would be, because, like, bears at least have, like, a body shape and plan that you could probably conceive of as a mouse. You'd probably just think they were a really large, fucked up mouse. Also, like, bears yeah. bears are, like, either ignorant of you or want to eat you, whereas humans are, like, you know, pick up a mouse and be like, look at this little dude. Hee-hee. Hee-hee. Maybe they'll hit they you on have, a table. They also have... <laughs> Survival they also, dislocation. They also have guns. Um, well, we also have guns, and that's... That's pretty Speak crazy. Yourself. Am I going to need to put an animal abuse content warning on this episode? I don't know. Probably worth doing. Yeah. I mean, there was just the bit about someone getting bitten in the face by a snake and disfigured. Yeah. Thanks, Redwall. 
I wish that wool was a different color. That's why I look like this. You should have seen me before. Is that how beautiful. you got the mustache? Yeah. Yeah. That that. <laughs> You had yeah, a beard. This is a snake bite. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a very <laughs> strange snake bite. Yeah. A lot of little teeth. Yeah. But I mean, the reason I brought it up is one, because it's another furry franchise apart <clears> from Mario <throat> Cats, but we actually have some Red Wall books oh, in the really? club yeah. room. Do we have Red Wall, though? Do we, we have do. the first It's one? over in Large Books. We've got Red Wall. Then we've got two completely random ones, both that predate Red Wall chronologically. We've got Martin the Warrior, which is actually a good one because he's like. Some like mystical legend by the time you get to Redwall and Marielle of Redwall, which I can't remember the plot to, it's something to do with the bell in the Abbey. Hmm, uh, Unesco Library is a bit like that. Of we just have random books in series that, like, we have we'll have books like two and six in a series. I mean, there's 21 books in the series. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Red Redwall's one of those series that it. it <laughs> You just get assorted books here and there. Yeah. There's like some very minor chronology, but mo- they're all self-contained. Yeah, no, no library's got all of Red Wall. That'd be fucked up. Wasn't yep. the while well, we have a lot of animorphs? Um, wasn't the Unisfa Library like initially built just by like going to like secondhand bookstores and just scraping the shelves? Yep. That's probably why. Well, I mean, like, have you ever been to like a full library and had all of Red Wall? You haven't. Trust me. <laughs> My primary school library had quite a few of them. Mm, but there'll always be a couple that are missing, no matter what. It's, it's just a, one of those rules. I mean, this was the, in, like, 2004, Wolf. so, like, yeah, a lot of them you, went out. Aren't you, like, my age? Yeah, I'm 28. Yep. Yeah, I'm 28 as of yesterday. John gets to be in the minority of youth. I'm, once again, I don't think there's an, anybody who's been younger than me on this podcast yet. Can you imagine being younger? It's because there's no one younger than you, John. You're a fucking baby. <laughs> no, there, there is. I just we'd mostly had older Camhole people on. It's true. Wait, you because you said you weren't born in 2002. No, I was born in th- 2002. Oh. He wasn't born in 2001. Yeah. <laughs> R- Red Three, Wall. Two, one. one. We're back. We're back after regularly technical scheduled. Technical difficulty. Nothing happened actually. Three, two, one. So I went Red back Wall. after technical difficulty. So, like, Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> I should have marked a page because, like, they have amazing descriptions of food in these books. Oh yeah, that's, like it'll that be a, a like pie that's made of like turnips and roots, and it just sounds like the best thing. Yeah, like, no, those those books really could sell you on food that you'd see in real life and be like, mm, okay, it's like a literary version of like the Land Before Time when you see them eating oh those leaves God. and you're like, God, oh I want God, a salad. I know exactly what you mean. You just look at them. Hey, I want a ton of <laughs> fucking leafs. The only need me some tree stars. Yeah, the only two books I can remember doing food very well were uh, Stormlight Archive. I remember there being like a curry I really wanted, and uh, not sci-fi or fantasy, but the girl with a dragon tattoo. Have mm. any of you read that? I have those read books. That. I just remember getting very hungry reading those. The the characters huh. eat a lot of sandwiches, or at least the main character eats a lot of sandwiches, and it makes me like. I'm like, I have, usually I'm like, sandwiches, uh, after reading it, I'm like, ooh, The sandwiches. idea of a sandwich is usually better than the reality. I haven't, yeah, that's definitely true. Ooh, I haven't read pizza. those books ooh. in years, but that's certainly not what stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> there was some other stuff, like mysteries and, like, crazy and shit trauma, going down. Yeah, I yeah I'd trauma, yeah. I one too. of the books that was set in the Abbey out, because this one doesn't, ha- this is, I'm currently reading Lord Brocktree, which, chronologically speaking, is the earliest book in the series. The eponymous abbey does not exist yet, and it's kind of light on food descriptions. Mm-hmm. Minus one points, Mister Jakes. You aren't here to receive that ding, but um, if you are listening, I uh, would love to have you on. Yeah, if uh, you're he's listening, he's dead. He died in two thousand. If you're not listening, hi. How's it going? If you're up, <laughs> what's up <laughs> in the English afterlife? No, specifically, shout out to all of our listeners who aren't listening. Shout out. I hope, we really I hope you're all having a great hope, time. We really, uh, we hope you're having a great time doing uh, literally anything else, aka. Uh, you better not be better. listening to this in the car. No, you're allowed to not listen to this in the car, though. What? Here's to all of our listeners who aren't listening to this in the car. They can not listen to I'm this in all this kinds a- of locations. Oh yeah, here's to, here's to everyone not listening to this in yeah. the car, in the in the bus or at home. No, you know, if you're on the bus or at home, you gotta. <laughs> you. <laughs> if you're at home pe- or on the bus you must be listening to here our podcast here is to all the people at home or on the bus who have to listen to the podcast and here is to all the people who are anywhere else who are not listening to the podcast Yeah, I tried listening to the podcast in the car and orbital lasers 
that did were targeted happen. to my location. Um, I had to pay a lot for those. Um, I it does like- seem like it would eat into the budget a little bit. Oh, John, I'm I'm excited about orbital lasers, bud. I got some orbital laser based plans. Well, I don't have plans, but there's orbital lasers involved. What? New thing you can DM to John if you had access to an orbital laser hypothetically. Yeah, DM that what would to your his target house. be? <laughs> Don't DM the orbital laser. Just opening up a DM and it's just a beam. Send to me directly an orbital laser. It immediately takes effect. Uh can Okay, I here's something I kind of want to talk You might not have any thoughts on this, but we played the Legend of the Five Rings card game 2 days ago. Do you have any thoughts on it? Uh okay, so um, the Legend of the Five Rings LCG, uh, it's, it's a card game. It's discontinued, but it came out in 2017. My, it's very good, my first but also major not great, but is, also good. Um, I don't know. I only got to play it once. Yeah, we only played it once, and like the first, and I got the first round severely was, fucked. I thought you made a decent comeback, like in I, the middle. I, I was one, one thing off killing you, but mm. yeah, it didn't, it didn't I, work out. As yeah, you were pretty close. I nearly you, got you. You really almost got me, and also as a person who's played it more. Like, I haven't played it much, but I've played it, like, th- that was my first time playing it, or even playing that clan. Uh, you you, ha- you really made me work for it, you know? Uh, yeah, I had to. Um, yeah, no, it was, it's a neat little game. I'd have to play it more before I could really, like, pitch it, but it's it was fun. I do plan on playing it with Jack at some point. But again, I, just, I, haven't, I have no time at the moment to yeah, do things. Same. Uh, Semester ends, and I'm going to have so much time, and I'm going to use it to fucking ferment. I'm also- going to, like, fucking pick a corner, I'm going to curl up into a little ball, and I'm going to rot. I was just wondering great. if you had any... Mood. I don't know if there's anything that stood out to you. Playing it for me, at least, uh, I am reminded once again of why this game did not receive massive commercial success. Of It is long, and there are a lot of decisions you have to make constantly. There's, there's a lot of times you can do certain things, yeah. It is... It, it is a lot... It is far more cognitively taxing than, like, a game of magic. Oh... Uh. I, I think it would probably get a little bit less if you got used to it, but I think all things do. I think, yeah, if you get used to it... Uh, As a complete a outsider, less, but... magic already seems fairly cognitive. The, the thing about magic, usually, when you're playing it, is you don't... The amount of decisions you need to make in magic compared to L5R is less. In L5R, there are so many... I feel like there are so many like factors you need I to take I have seen you people agonizing over which piece of cardboard to put in your stack of cardboard. The cardboards. thing with magic is that you can build a deck where you don't have to think. I don't think you could do that in L5R. No, I don't think you could. Just but yeah. So you can preload the thinking. Oh yeah, no, you can you can have a magic deck where you've got like a fucking flow chart and you can just run it. Yeah, basically. Um I do like, like the card know, art in Magic the Gathering. You you got to see the card art. Yeah, for some L5R. some people are flow chart players. Sorry, you go. No, you can talk about magic players. No, no, like, like some magic players are just like flowchart players where you can just sort of flowchart what they do. I, and I love building a deck that can just sort of go. Yeah, me too. If I have to make a decision, I've done something wrong. Didn't you say that you liked you liked magic decks that like have you try and solve problems with what you have? Yes. Um, or in it, like... Or is this like Commander versus 1v1? No, I mean, like, it's sort of the same thing. It, it's that... That it, was talking about draft or something, wasn't it? Uh, we talked about a few things. I... We're I don't like my around. deck to do the same thing every time. I say as I know what any of these things are. Ah, it's all good. Um, yeah, I don't know. Card, card games. Who knows what I like? Not fucking me. I do not. Um, okay. okay. Can, I, can I talk about a game design thing that I've recently bumped into that I'm really excited about? Um, can I just yeah. finish the L5R? It's, okay. Here's, picture this. You are going to try and make an attack in L5R. Here are the decisions you need to make. Uh, or here are the things you need to think about. Uh, you need to think about which province you're going to attack. You need to think about what uh, element you're going to attack with. You need to think about whether it's political or, or military. You need to think about who you're going to attack with, who they might block with, who you need to not attack with because then you need them to defend later. Uh, what cards you're going to commit use in that. What card, How much resources you have to use on those cards. How much resources you'd like to save to then use on cards later. Um, yeah, there's a lot. I forgot what, several years of my life thinking about that. Yeah, what uh, what element is your opponent going to take? Uh, do you want to maybe take one so they can't take it? What like who are they, who are they going to potentially defend with because they also want to attack? And... I don't know. By the end of that game, I think I understood what was going on pretty well. I understood what was going on well enough to be like, oh, I I can't fucking do anything right now. But yeah, it worked out. I was yeah. Um, do you was... have the experience of 
that we I had playing the root board game where you kind of play a game and then afterwards you're sort of like thinking about it and you realize you've been doing a particular mechanic completely wrong. Uh, no, with that one. I didn't have that with L5, probably because I played it a few times, but I have had that multiple times with Root Game. There was a period where I just played the Lizard Cult, and for like I three games, for like three games in a row, I would play it and then be like, oh, I was doing that wrong. Oh, I was doing that wrong. It took I me like. Com- I was playing Keepers in Iron. I completely hamstrung myself by fully misunderstanding how their like primary method of gaining victory points works. Oh, yeah. It's like that in Root. Root I've the, not played Root, but it sounds interesting. It's for the viewers, uh, uh, for our listeners uh, at home or on the bus. And it is viewers a everywhere else. Incredibly asymmetrical four-player, uh, like area control board game, where all the factions are uh, little woodland critters um, uh, that are vying for control over uh, a woodland of, of a woodland, and all the factions play very differently. Okay. Uh, so it can be quite hard to wrap your head around. How does this faction win? For example, the Keepers Iron, they want to find relics, I believe. Yeah, like, they're not that interested in taking, like, overall land area. You want to go... You basically want to move across the board and take the relics as you go. Yeah. There's... As opposed to, like, the Eerie... Or, like, the default factions, you have the Eerie, which is basically, like, they have a sort of cult of personality leader who continually adds to, like, their decrees. And so you end up trying to... Like, just trying so very hard to keep all of these plates spinning. Like, you need to move a certain amount of times this turn. You need to have a, have a certain number of battles. You need to build a certain number of things. And if you can't, your government collapses. I think the best way metaphor for the Eerie is you have a programming code that you slowly... That you're slowly building on... That you must build on every single turn. And if you can't fulfill that code of, like, recruit here, move at these places, battle in these places, build in these places, everything falls apart. Um... And then you have the Vagabonds, which are quite literally just... Stealing. You can steal, I think. They're basically like your own like mini separate RPG within the, va- the game. The Vagabonds are like, what if you didn't want to play this area control game and you just wanted to play a D&D character instead? They're also the focus of the Root RPG. The root um, yeah, right. They also shouldn't be the focus of the Root game because they kind of suck in the Root game, <laughs> I think. I mean, they tend to be... A lot, like they tend to either win under everyone's noses or be terrible. Yeah, from that, what I've seen. Um, root, root the board game. I we won't go explain every faction, but it's it is definitely a board game which is a little Game of Thrones diplomacy like in how it's you you got to if you want to win you got to kind of fly under people's radar. Um, yeah, diplomacy is. I'm good at the diplomacy part of those games, and I'm like. I, I don't know. I, I'm, sometimes I'm like, this is the best the feeling, and sometimes I'm like, this is the worst feeling. Oh, diplomacy. Cam, what was your game design point? All right, so I I have run a lot of fucking games. Not, like, as many as some people, and certainly I don't have Jack's rate of, like, finishing games that I start, but I've run a lot of fucking games. No one does. Yeah, it's true. No one does. No one, no one finishes games like Jack. It's fucked up. Um, In the crew. But, uh, yeah, so I've read a good few, like, rule books and all almost all rule books have some kind of like little pre-gen story or campaign in them somewhere for you know teaching people to run stuff and i've read a few like adventure modules and things um the one i'm i'm gonna be running soon uh like over the the christmas holidays for us uh something i'm really enjoying about the way it's written is that every encounter has a loss outcome what rpg what, what? it's gonna be lancer Lance, um, sorry, but, uh, but lancer. this is not about like the campaign itself this is just about the design okay so like for all all the encounters that you have all the fights there is a condition there for what happens if the players fucking lose and that's huge like i've not actually seen that before because like a lot of games sort of the the pre-gens will assume that the players win those because a lot of them if you're in a fight the expectation is that by the end of the fight one of the two sides has died, right? Typically. Most most games, you play a fight with someone, it's like, okay, I'm going to either kill them, or I'm, or it's specifically a chase, right? Most, games are, most games are like deathmatch, yeah. Yeah, it's all deathmatch all the time. Um, but Lance is not like that, which I'm really, really appreciating. Um, but yeah, it means that the story can evolve naturally, and that there, there are fights that the players can lose, and it has conditions. Like, the players aren't necessarily dead if they've lost the fight. In fact, they're, they're usually not. Um, but it means that life for the people of the system that they're in gets worse a lot of the time. Aww. And that has consequences. And I'm like, fucking, I don't know, I'm, I'm finding it really endearing. And 
yeah, I just the idea of a, a loss condition on fights is is a it just floored me as like how have I not thought about that before? That's pretty sick. I think uh, a piece of game mastering advice I've heard a lot is like plan what happens if the player characters do nothing. If they do nothing, what happens? Oh, okay. And then like then when they do stuff, you just change accordingly. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. If if players do nothing, you. Uh, my first advice would be like, if you can find another player who does things. No, it's not. Play. It's not saying <laughs> but, expect them to do nothing. No, I know. It's just but, plan as if they were do nothing, and they obviously will yeah, do something. Have something from the. But do you have like the. No, I know what you mean. You have like it's well, like I think the example is, uh, the goblins are going to attack the city. They'll ransack and burn everything down, and these people will die. That's what happens if the players do nothing, and yeah. then the players can do React something. To that, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, my my personal jamming style has been described as uh, I hand out shovels, and I let you dig your own graves. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, well, because if if left to like like the way I think is that I I sort of like ask people what they do, and then I just extrapolate consequences from that. I think that's a and that can be like positive or negative, right? If you're doing things that work, they work, and if you're doing things that will have consequences, they'll have consequences. And that usually feeds itself for a while. And it usually does end with somebody sitting at the bottom of that fucking ditch that they've dug, shovel in hand, digging. Can, can you give an example of this? Because I'm having a little trouble, like, what do you mean by, like, giving someone a shovel? Exactly. So I, I hand out, like, if someone says they want to try something, right? Generally, I, I, I'm always careful to make sure that I warn people if they're doing something, like, that they're that they would know is a bad fucking idea, right? Yeah. Like, if someone's like, I'm gonna open this fucking door into space, I'm like, your dude would know that's a door into space, don't do that, right? Um, or, like, you know, your your character would know this was a rude thing to say, even if you don't know that's a rude thing to say, your character would, so I'm going to warn you of this. Um, which is one of the weird things about L5R sometimes, is that there's a whole, there's a whole school for when you fucking insult someone by accident, you don't. Um, but that one, it makes sense because those characters also wouldn't necessarily know. Yeah. But it's, it's a weird, interesting meta spot there because if you're playing as one of those characters while you do know things, it's very odd. Um, but yeah, uh, in general, if players want to do stuff or if they... Uh, I'm, I always, I usually, at least, give out a, lot, a little bit more XP than most people because I think giving players the tools to do stuff gives you know they'll they'll take those tools and they'll go and do something stupid with it um they'll see a bottle of magic perfume and drink it yeah well not yeah like a little bit but it's yeah um oh what is a good example i think my f- oh, i have a i have an example of uh, or i don't Are know we if talking this applies like impulse bad ideas or just someone being like i want to be a dick on purpose and see what happens uh if someone's being a dick on purpose and seeing what happens that's a different thing i i'm i'm talking more like i'm well, not like a dick to each other but like yeah. i want to annoy people in game and see what happens yeah not not as much it's more like if someone's like okay here's what i want and they like they start planning a heist i'm like all right neat this like the heist itself might go well but like there will be consequences for going on that heist right yeah um I don't know if it's quite the scale. I'm going to just... I'm going to tell a story I really like now. Because okay, okay. It's, it's story time. Story I was time running a, with Uncle an Cam. ODST campaign, um, which I'd built the rules for off Dark Heresy. But that's a, so it's, it's a Halo game where you don't play as Spartans. You play as orbital drop shock troops. Dudes that get in a little pod and get launched out of a gun into, into the planet. Um, and it was early on, back before the aliens turned up. Um, and they're underground in a facility... Uh, you know, interacting with some some dudes who are planning some some anti-government things because you don't play as good people in this game until the aliens show up and you're retroactively all heroes. Um, let's not dig into that right now, but um, they there was a, a like a big bulkhead door with a small hole in it um, that the players were sort of uh, had had come across. One of them was flanking around in these tunnels to get uh, behind the enemy, but most of them had come across a bulkhead door. Um, and they're all sitting there, and the little hatch opens on the door, and a dude sticks his hand out with a grenade. Right? And goes to drop it, and one of the players is like, I grabbed the hand. And I'm like, all right, that's a fair response. Uh, roll, for, you know, roll do it quickly enough that they don't drop the grenade, and they succeed. So they've, they've got the hand, right? And the grenade's not primed properly, because they've got to let go of it. Yeah. And so they're like, all right, they're going to try and pull that hand back in. <laughs> And they're like, we're not going to let him. 
<laughs> and so you've got half the party, well, more than half the party, you're all but one of the party, just at this door pulling this dude's arm, while, like, on the other side of the door, and the guy that's flanking around has now, like, the guards that were defending the place he's coming in from are, like, like watching in horror as there's this dude who's at the door with his arm stuck in the door, like, screaming. <laughs> And they're like, oh god, what's happening over there? And so, yeah, Dave walks in behind the guards and he, he stands there and like he goes to like you know execute the guards. He's like, wait, what the fuck is that? And so he's standing there with the guards watching this unfold. As the party starts having to like cut this dude's arm off and the dude's <laughs> on the other side are like, we gotta cut his arm off to get him out! <laughs> anyway, um, I believe they ended up cutting the arm off, getting the grenade, going to put it back through the hole... And then someone on the other side of the door put their hand in, and so they had the same problem where they were both, both sides had a hand on this grenade, stopping it from being primed. And now no one could leave, because if anyone left, the grenade would explode their hands. The classic hot potato conundrum. Yeah, hot potato, the hottest potato. potato I've ever managed to give a party. Um, the closest story I have is uh, my party came across a mysterious spooky looking creepy old man and he was like i'll give you this cursed ring uh oh yeah offering for, a cursed ring up front for, and being like this thing's cursed you don't want this for a cursed ring that. for this money that's a shovel i for for like five gold and eventually they're like talking about it to him and he's just like just take it for free just um and the amount of like time that party spent hassling over one, whether they should wear the cursed ring, and two, what they should do with it, until uh, one of my players who was playing a Warforged opens up his, like, reactor chest, sticks it in, and puts it, and just closes it, and it's like, it's just in the fire now. It doesn't melt. The, the, uh, Have and fun one, with that. And the other player being like, that was my cursed ring, you owe me that. You got got by the head of Vecna. Anyway, if that, I think they eventually put the ring on, and uh, nothing happened. <laughs> the curse of you anticipation of <laughs> it was magical i had plans for it no actually i didn't have plans for it <laughs> but i was like i'm gonna give him a cursed ring and, it, and i'll make it relevant eventually post hoc uh, mcguffin i believe my uh my plan eventually was to give them more cursed pieces of armor and then if they were all the cursed like armor mm. something would happen um no, that's fair yeah, but it was so funny giving them this curse ring, which I knew would do nothing, and them just deliberating and arguing and fighting over it for, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. <sighs> my, my general philosophy is, if the players want to do something, and they have, like, a goal in mind, I will try and, like, let that work. Because it's like, yeah, you know, that's, a, that's a plan you've thought through, and if there's no, like, obvious, like, consequences that I can think of that would fuck everything up, uh, I let it happen. But if there's consequences that they... Well, if I can think of obvious consequences, I let them know. And if I can think of consequences that they wouldn't have thought of, I let them do it. <laughs> I hit them with the consequences, baby. <laughs> uh, it's good. It works out. Because it means that people get to like think, oh, I did a cool plan, and now the world is evolving around it. Hmm. Do you have an RPG story for Yona? You had the bear one, and also the naked mole rat. Um, let's see, other stories from the Root RPG. Okay, we were in a clearing that ha was recently come under the control of the Eerie after being conquered back from the Marquis 8, which is the cat faction. It's, uh, Root lore being the woodland was ruled by the Eerie dynasty, which is like birds, and then the cats came and took it over and established a monarchy, and now the birds are back and trying to bring... Take it the back, birds right? Are back in town. The birds, birds are, are back, back in town. town. The birds Damn. are back in town. <laughs> Damn. Damn. In this case, um, the locals kept talking about sort of like a henge, like a barrow, some graves, where there's like, they thought it was haunted. Like they see, they keep seeing lights at night. I Sometimes there's henge. smoke. And so we're like, we're going to go see. There might be something interesting there. We go there. My character is a ranger. We also have a... Exile, who is an ex-bird. No, he ex -bird. is a bird. Ex-bird. <laughs> Ex-government official yeah. of the birds. And used to be big in birds. Now he's not. And also Dennis, the Tasmanian devil, who is a menace. 
Dennis the Menace. Spectacular. No, his, that's a great character. Dennis's already. menace behavior has actually saved our asses multiple times Fuck now. Fuck yeah, Dennis. And so we go up to this henge, and there's signs of habitation. We can hear, and you can hear something. There's something. There's people inside. And so our bird guy immediately busts out with, hey, you should come out or we're going to go like dob on you for being here to the birds. It was some cats, so we immediately got captured because like, none of us yep. were prepared for combat. This and is the cats f- will fuck you up. Yep. We got captured. Dennis set the place on fire, which allowed us to escape. Usual solution. It works. Thanks, Danny. One of the best things I've ever made was scone hinge. Made a whole hinge out of scones. We actually ended up becoming friends with those cats because we managed... Stockholm Syndrome. Well, no, because we got away from them and then we sort of like, okay, we'll help you get out of here. So we sabotaged the armory that was in the area and then immediately booked it to the ferry out of the area with the cats. And then we got to go to a cat-controlled clearing, which... We now had like some free goodwill because one of the other mechanics in the game is sort of like reputation with the different factions. Nice, nice. Also, maybe we should mention that in Vroot, the, the the animals are not to scale. Oh, I didn't know that. No, they're not to scale. They're like kind of little s- s- semi-anthropomorphized guys. It's they're a, all it's, the same it's size. also a bit like Redwall, where like the mice are small, but they're not the actual relative size a mouse would be to, say, a badger or a cat. Right. Yeah. So they're... I suppose if a mouse is like... Role-playing game small. A mouse is like a halfling. Yeah, Yeah. basically. And a cat is like a... There's not actually that many, like, species mechanics. Like, there's sort of, like, optional ones. Like, birds can fly a little bit if they're unencumbered. They did decide that weasels are 14 feet tall. 14... Yeah. Nice. What? Tall weasels. Tweezels. <laughs> yeah, right. Hair for lumps and tweezels. <laughs> <laughs> They're very full beasel. Um. But I enjoy it. I quite like the way, like, all of the sort of action roles are resolved, like, 2d6. Anything 6 and below is a failure. 7 to 9 is... A success with conditions, so like... A little bit of Apocalypse World-like then? It's powered by the Apocalypse World, so yep, that's the, literally yep, that. That's like, it's, it's the old... Uh, that old chestnut, the old And like your, your characters are all vagabonds, so you're literally like transients. So the sort of feeling that you get that you're sort of like constantly like on the bare bones of your ass, like flying by the seat of your pants, is sort of suited, suited to it. Mm. I'm As a player, I always hate the like success with a consequence being a huge block of the success chunk and like i i'm getting better with it now but i'm like god damn it i i rolled good i'm succeed it does hurt when you keep rolling mediocre like making mediocre rolls and it's just yeah it makes the like unconditional successes feel so good yeah i I rolled a 12 to punch a guy in the face and it was beautiful (laughs) is apocalypse world actually like is that RPG actually good? Like, everyone plays right. Powered by the Apocalypse, but was the original? Uh, Apocalypse World? Yeah. Look, I don't know. I don't think I've ever played Apocalypse World itself. Um, like, okay, not not a controversial opinion, because I'm pretty sure this one's just mixed opinions, but I'm just not a huge fan of Apocalypse, of uh, Powered by the Apocalypse games. Fair enough. I've played a few. I... I don't vibe with it. It's honestly, like, I've played some d and I've played some Pathfinder 2E a very long time ago. So this is, like, the first, like, significant departure from that style. Mm. So I quite like that it's a lot... There's a lot less numbers. A lot less numbers. No, that's fair. Um, and also the combat, like, d and is very strongly designed for combat, and I hate the combat. It's... Well, D&D so, is it not good combat, is abso- the thing. Let's not get into this. d and combat sucks. We can all agree on this. But yeah, like I feel it flows better. Yeah, I think a lot of my enjoyment is just that I really enjoy the little dudes, the setting. Yeah, no, that's fair. For like being very little, fair. Little I I don't know. I I love me like a good combat with some crunch to it. I don't think I've ever experienced good. combat. I did break I a love, man's neck. I love to see numbers Fuck. with my bare hands, my bare badger hands. 
um, I don't know. I, I think a lot of my favorite systems, uh, I mean, my, my, my like, I don't know if it's my favorite system, but certainly the one that I've got like the most fond feelings for is like the Dark Heresy system with its fucked up critical hit charts. Like you, when you get someone to zero health, they're not dead. They go into negative health and there's four different charts for like the types of damage. Each of them is broken up into four different location charts. And uh, so if you get to like negative seven uh, to the arm from an energy weapon, that has a whole ass result to it. Ooh. So like Vats, but tabletop? Yeah. What if Vats like had some fucking descriptions to it too? So you um, can obliterate someone's limbs if you felt like it. Yes. And it's beautiful. There that is, does it's, sound... it's a lot of fun. Um, nice. You can get some really fucking great moments from that. Just like, oh yeah, you've been shot in the in the leg, and like, you're fucking like, it, it's like, okay, you've been shot in the leg pretty badly. Ow. You're oh, like my negative leg. four, right? Ah, uh, my you've leg's got, like, a negative broken four. bone in there. Oh, my bone, I can feel it not being I don't know, together. Like, there's, there's whole ass descriptions, and they have long lasting consequences. I think there will certainly be consequences to this. I do like consequences. I think consequences are are a fun and good thing. I like it when the consequences are like there from the start. It's like, okay, you're getting into a fight. That's you could have, reasonably like, have seen this happening. Yeah, right? You get into a fight, you're like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting it's possible to get shot here, right? And sometimes you do. Um, the, the ODST game, I was very careful to increase the lethality of certain things, so um, a lot of the time, like, most most NPCs can't uh, can't get the auto-crit thing that players can get. Mm-hmm. Uh, for everyone familiar with Halo, I made the Needler auto-crit. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Isn't that doesn't that shoot super fast? Uh, so it's it's like a of little little purple needles of glass, oh, right? Yeah. And if you get enough of them in you, they super combine and you explode. Beautiful. So uh, any enemy could could crit with that thing, and enemies that could already crit got bonuses. <laughs> because I was like, no, this thing is meant to be fucking scary. The first time they fought a needler, Winslade lost like three fingers. Aren't they also incredibly common in Halo? Yeah. They're like the grunt weapons. Yeah, oh, they're not the most common grunt weapon, but they are a grunt weapon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're a grunt weapon. I was throwing those fuckers around. <laughs> that game was fun. Turns out that, well, especially because I, I spent so the first... So neither is a treat. I spent the first, like, five or six sessions fighting insurrectionists, right? As the GM, like, they were fighting other human beings that were just, like, didn't want to get more taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, like, so the party is horrifically overgunned for that. They're, like, special forces, very well armored, you know, surprise attacks, fighting people who are, like, at best trained with some equipment, right? Um, and so they got, you know, first few sessions, they all earn their call signs because they, uh, they didn't have call signs at the start of the campaign. You know, they all feel like oh, badasses, yeah. right? Yeah, call signs. First fight with the Covenant, Winsley loses three fingers, someone's comrade dies, plasma pistols go clean through their armor. Time to disabuse some notions. Yep. Oh, it was great. Uh, uh, they fucking... You fucking killed them. Yeah. Oh, okay. A cool mechanic from from that, because it was based off Only War, which is the Dark Heresy, like, soldiers game. Mm -hmm. Every player character, or most player characters, have a comrade, which is a second dude. A A bud. Another sort of bud, right? Who is meant to make it feel like you're part of a big squad. Uh, they don't like. They don't act independently normally. They they give you buffs to what you're doing, and they have a little personality, and they're either healthy, injured, or dead. <laughs> and anytime As someone tries to are. shoot at you, if they roll a double, they hit the comrade. So like one in ten times that you get shot, your comrade takes that hit. I'm not ready to get emotionally attached to something so fallible. Some motherfuckers get so attached to their comrades. It's beautiful. Dave Dave really got attached to his comrade, and he sent that guy off alone, which you're not meant to do, because, yeah, they can act independently if they're alone, but they also die in two hits of anything. So Dave sends his comrade out alone to do tasks, and, like, it works a few times, and Dave's, like, really a big, big fan, respects this guy. Uh, Dave's comrade died in that first fucking fight with the Covenant, he never recovered. Dude. His next two comrades, he threw away, basically. He was, Jesus. like, intentionally being like, no, it's not my boy. You will never be my boy. Um, and then he took a side path into the class that doesn't have a comrade. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we're not giving you another one. Grief. <laughs> Organic storytelling. Yep. Yeah, we love to see it. Um, talking about storytelling. I could go anywhere from this. No, I've, I've you t- can go exactly one place. 
Pokemon Adventures. I was wrong. <laughs> it was not Homestuck for it the was... first time ever. Okay, we can talk about Homestuck. So No. Can't argue with that. I That was a pretty firm no. That's all you need to do to shut me up. I'm like Swiper. <laughs> <laughs> you give me a Homestuck. No Homestucking. <laughs> You need to give me a firm no, and I just won't do it. I mean, that's that's a good character trait, is if you've given a firm no, we'll stop. Like, fuck yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. And you you take those. Uh, I'm per- just more interested in Pokemon manga than I am in Homestuck yeah, currently. Yeah, I'm down to hear Pokemon um, Adventures. That's wrong. Uh, Pokemon Adventures is, the, like, I, I've, is the Pokemon manga. I've been reading, the like, the first three volumes of it. Quick from, interjection here. Or the, Yeah. Weeb. Right, you're, you're yeah, okay, that's weeb. I, I I don't really watch much anime or weeb. read any manga, but I have I have a nostalgic connection to this because I had some of them when I'm I was a kid. I'm the motherfucker that brought up Evangelion in the first episode. You're fine. I was gonna Fair say enough. I'm significantly just, I'm, more weeby than you. Yeah, I'm okay, legally sweet. obligated to call you a I, weeb, but like I, I just really want to find out what happens to my girl Yellow um in the later volumes, but we haven't got to that yet. So the, they were made in the '90s, I believe, before the anime came out. And they're based entirely on, like, the first games. Yeah, the anime was based off that. Yeah. Um, so you have the main character, Red, who's very... Who looks like... Who looks... You know, it's what Ash is based off looking. It looks like Ash. And then uh, Blue, who's Gary. Uh, and then Green, who I don't think you see in the show. But she's, like, the third one. Uh, um, she is well, she's basic- based off of, like, the, the female character model, right? Yes, yes, she is. She's based off like the female character model in the games. Um, uh, th- I think all the characters are pretty match up with how they are in like the show, except I Gre- assume that Green. Green is a fucking bell end. Who? Blue. Uh, blue's kind of blue's kind of the edgy. Yeah, he's, he's like the bell-end. edgy. I don't want to talk to you. I'm better than you. I'm uh, sorry. My primary brain, like uh, you've activated some like lizard brain memories here, and if I'm asked to describe Gary Oak, the first words out of my mouth will be bell end. Yeah, he's not super likable. No, he's ever. not. Uh, but the thing I find very interesting about Pokemon Adventures is picking up this manga from the 90s, which was written probably for kids. I was not expecting... Uh, I was not expecting much. I was expect- I was there for the nostalgia and to get to when Yellow at- comes in. Um, but it was actually really good and very interesting. You think, you think seeing Pokemon fight 40 times in a manga is going to be boring, but actually it's pretty good. Like, they, like mix it up and stuff and there's like the little arcs inside the fights my favorite thing is just it's very clear the the whoever made this like the the artists or the writers they they did like sugimori the, do the manga or did he just sure do the game art they they were given the creative liberty to be like here's pokemon here's the pokemon world whatever you think might work in this world it does like There are things explored in this which you never see in the games. Like, there are zombies. There are little... You get a zombie jump scare of a Psyduck. They go to Lavender Town. And the the place is... The the cemetery is full of zombies. Like, literal zombies. That is what you would expect to find. Blue is mind-controlled by a... By, by like, a Team Rocket guy. Um, My favorite invention of Pokemon is a guy who makes a gun that shoots electrodes and Voltorbs, which are like the little... Uh, Pokeball-looking motherfuckers. The little Pokeball ones that are, like, electric. And he has, like, mag- Magnemites to have, like, uh, a magnetic shield. Uh, and, like, a Zapdos on his back that, like, charges up. Dude, he just Pokemon casually going. has a Zapdos? Uh, no, not casually. It was a big bit. It was like, you know, like, the Team Rocket have captured all three legendary birds, and they're Let's using them. Who doesn't have a Zapdos at this point? <laughs> I mean, in 1995, you would have been the talk of the playground, my guy. You got a Zapdos on your back? Lieutenant Surge, baby. Ow. One Lieutenant of the guy- Surge. One of the guys was wearing, like, Pokemon as armor. Like, he had, like, muck, like, shoulder pads and had, like, an Ekans on his hand that he would use to, like, reach out and grab things. Um, the Pokemon, like, Gross, hit the by trainers the way. sometimes. Like, they'll attack the trainers as a strat. Pokemon die in this. Like, an Arbok just gets clean cut in half. Oh, God. There's a there's a, there's a a time where uh, Red is hanging out with Giovanni, who is the 
the leader of Team Rocket, the big bad. But he doesn't know he's the big bad at this point. He's just a guy who's just been like... His name's just Giovanni for no reason. I yeah. don't think he even knows his name. He's just like, okay, just well, been a guy who's been like hanging out Because if you know his name's Giovanni, with... it is, yeah. it's over at that point, um, right? Like, Giovanni's not the name that a non-mob boss has. Yeah. Shout out to people called Giovanni who aren't mob bosses. I'm so sorry. It must be hell. I mean, in the context of the Pokemon world, I feel like he's probably fairly well known. He is, because he's like the gym leader. As the big... Red is not super. He he's, doesn't go He's out. a bit dumb. He's a little. He's he's he is the kind of dumb, uh, over overly eager shonen main, protag. Yeah, basically. But like over the course of it, he learns to like Pokemon think a bit more. And... Does dodge the usual shonen issue by having little dudes do all the fighting for him? Yeah, yeah. Which um, that's pretty smart. It's really satisfying seeing his team grow and like, uh. And evolve over the series, you're like, oh my god, that was the Snorlax he caught like four adventures ago. He's using it in this new way to like block someone's path. Nice. He doesn't just like go out into like Route 12 and walk around in the grass for a while. No, it's really fun. Uh, but it's like the problems in like old, in like some adventures, the problems are the Pokemon, and then he catches them and then he uses the Pokemon as the solutions later. Mm. And you're like, oh, he still has that guy. Um, what was the other thing? I mean, that's how Ash gets his Pikachu, isn't it? Yeah. Red also has a Pikachu, um, but it's less, it's more just like, yeah, it's just another guy I have. Yeah, because they didn't know Pikachu was going to be like the fucking, like, the, the, oh god. Early Pokemon merch when they didn't quite know which guy was going to take off. They were so, they were so I reckon it's Poliwhirl, baby. (laughs) Poliwhirl's like. Get that Poliwhirl merch. Poliwhirl's as big a Pokemon as Pikachu in it. It's like. Yeah. Red has his, like, main three is his Bulbasaur, his Pikachu, and his Poliwhirl. Wait, Red has the Bulbasaur? Yeah. Red has the fucking Bulbasaur. Red, Red has ha- the green one? Red has the Are Bulbasaur. Are fucking with me right now? Guess, guess what the others have. No, so I, I, I assume Wait, that, like, Gary has a Charizard, doesn't he? Blue, Blue has the, yeah, the Charmeleon. Uh, and so Green has the fucking Squirtle. Squirtle. Which he steals. I hate this. What are you This do? makes me viscerally upset. Go back in time 20 years, I don't know. Cope. Yeah. I guess I could cope. I mean, that was my plan, really. I think you can see this well mold, even. Man. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know. This is like, it's like I get upset that electrons are negative. Because motherfuckers, before they realized that the electrons were the ones moving around, they were like, all right, that's the negative charge. And it makes thinking about it just a little bit more difficult well, than you've it got has the to protons, be. Protons, which are positive. You've yeah, got the but, neutrons, but which are neutral. Yeah, the other way around, right? So that the, the, the things that moved trons? around are the pluses. So that you'd fucking add shit by moving them around, that would make more sense intuitively, right? You don't like it's it's fine. This is never gonna get fixed. It's just how it is because we fucked it up right at the. St- it's like tanks. It's like tanks. Hold on, I've got a bit now. Uh huh. Right. Tanks. Got it. So tanks, right? The armored fighting vehicle. Yeah. Uh, Germany calls them uh, Panzers because they're named after you know big cats. I don't think the word Panzer is exactly that, but it's, it's all, close all, enough. Right? All I'm hearing is Panzi. Um, like in case, fucking pansy. So, so the word tank, is that where that right? like expression comes from? Pansies are flowers. Pansies are flower, yeah. Oh, panzer is like panther. It's it's a big cat. Rawr. Yeah. Um. So the, in English, they're tanks, and the word tank has a clear meaning, right? Um. You know, you hear the word tank, and you know what I mean. It's a fucking. It's a big armored vehicle. It's got a gun it's a on tank. it. It's a tank. Yeah. It pulls so, aggro. The reason that they're called tanks is that. <laughs> I think this might have come from the test audio, actually, now that I think about it. It's something that... I've brought this up a lot. The The tank uh, is called that because, for counterintelligence reasons, they were listed as water tanks on logistics documents so that the uh, the other the Germans wouldn't figure out what they were during World War I. Um, and that name stuck. Huh. And so now they're called tanks because they're called tanks. Um, and it fucking dragged me out of a book once when like it was like a, a fantasy book and one of the like late late book reveals uh you know a, a, a tank pulls out and they're like oh shit they have a tank and it's like very clear that this is not a thing that has existed before and i'm like why are you calling it that bud and i know like the fantasy problem of you know you call things what they're called because that's what we know them as yeah. and it makes it easier like you know you know th- things have names even even when they doesn't make sense but for that one specifically i'm like sometimes it's just stupid it's it's like they're making a big deal of the fact that this is not a thing that anyone would have seen before and that it's new to them. And they're like, on site, recognize it as a tank, though. And I'm like, uh, yeah. I don't know, bud. 
I don't think it is. What would I you think call it's... a tank if it wasn't a tank? You'd Car. probably just be, what the hell is that? Car with gun. That's very large. Some kind of fucking armored wagon. I had an idea early in this podcast of... I also have some more Pokemon Adventures things, which yeah, just Sorry, poof I... out of my mind. Uh, of what other games could you make tabletop RPGs out of? And it got me thinking, what if they made like a Call of Duty tabletop RPG? How would that work? Um, I mean, I, I need you to know that like RPGs, tabletop RPGs, where you play as like army go- army guys, mm-hmm. those exist. Not, not true, true, but. I think it was when we brought up how combat in a lot of games are in in a lot of TTRPGs are death matches, and it reminded me of yeah. like a COD death match. So what if you what oh, if it you was like a, a COD death match RPG? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the closest oh, thing I can think of off the top of my head, I know someone's made a couple of conversions for Destiny for different things. Ooh. I believe there's one called Light. Um, yeah, uh, which you know the, the core concession of Destiny being that when you die, you've got a little guy who unkills you. Yeah. Uh, I think that would work well for that that sort of gamey feel of you don't die when you're killed, right? Not not dying when you're killed is a core part of a team deathmatch environment. Um, yeah, like the the training match. The, the issue with this is that I don't think that you could get much of a compelling narrative out of a team deathmatch story. I think you. Could. Yes, that's true. And also, fighting against your equals is not fun often on the tabletop you can't it's not the bread and butter of it right like fighting against either you know, you know things that are differently equipped to you on a different like different like scale in some way works well on the tabletop uh because especially because the gm's one guy um and so like occasionally having a special enemy that like a special group of enemies that's like on the same scale as you who's as good as what uh, as what they're doing as what you're doing. I think it could work if work. it was like a tournament and then your opponents odds... were like pulling out cheeky strategies which you had to counter. Sure, um there'd be a risk of it kind of grinding to a halt as well though. Tournaments. Mm. Personally, if I have to try and think of intelligent things on the spot, I'm not gonna the, yeah, tournament, gonna tournament arcs aren't very good in a tabletop. Okay, what about I've this been RPG? In a few. I've fought, They're I'm usually sure not one. that good. What about in their instead of a serious COD either. deathmatch tabletop RPG? It is more of like a one page RPG which plays out the emotions that run through you over the course of a Call of Duty deathmatch game, including getting increasingly frustrated yourself finding one player on the other team that keeps killing you and becoming increasingly, like, feeling like you're mortal enemies with them, um, slowly doubting whether you're actually good at this game at all, or so, maybe you should pick a different Is this weapon. a personal experience, John? Yeah. I... So I think I think the big issue you're going to have here is that it sounds like it'd be a better PvP, so like, a game, than a think, PvE, like, than a, than a standard, you know, RPG I think there's a I think there's but a way also, to I make a like silly PvP one page tabletop yeah. RPG out of this. I think what you're what you're describing is a little bit closer to like a war game, but yes. Um the other thing is that like at, at some point, man, at yeah, some point that. it's easy to go play Call of Duty, dude. Like some things you can The new simulate, one costs like hundred and ten should... bucks. Play the old so, ones, they're still good. No one COD I... Modern Warfare two, the original Modern Warfare two. I was just discussing this the other day. Still one of the best games of all time. I think I played it on PC a while ago and you can't turn mouse acceleration off and it just sucks. That sounds like a skill issue. Uh, and the skill that you have the issue with is menu navigation. But yeah. <laughs> no, I think I like turned it, it off. I think I turned it off, but like the input still felt really weird. I mean, to be fair, a lot of like older games, if you're not used to like the controls for them, like I was, I've been trying to, well, I have been playing Psychonauts, which came out in 2005. Oh, yeah. Very early 2000s, like th- 3D platformer that, the 3D platforming controls are a bit janky. 3D platformers are always a little bit fucked. The music um, is so okay. good. Okay, but I'm pretty sure I my favorite game of all time second. is from 2005. And it is? Star Wars Battlefront 2 2005. This, I should the have original seen this Star Wars coming. Battlefront 2. That was a good game. That was, as I, I, I'm not kidding when I say, I'm. that is at the very least to this day in my top five games of all time. Probably higher than like just the top five. What's your top five? I, I would not be able to tell you. D- g- tell me. Oh, we'll start with Battlefront 2, isn't there? Okay, well, four um, more. Thank you. 
<laughs> so I can think of three. Okay, I can't well, do it. No, I, like the only, I can. I, can, I like, get to pick. You can. Hmm. What's your three? I know when I saw them. Um, Psychonauts, Okami, Banjo Kazooie, which I suppose can be two because Banjo Tooie is also pretty good. What's Okami? I never beat. Banjo-Kazooie Okami is. I feel like th- you say Okami in my mind is like some sort of white four-legged animal. Yes, it's a. You are Okami. She is a very good doggy. Nice. Um, it's a game. It, I think it originally came out on the PS2, then it was, it's been ported to like the Wii. It's been ported to PC. Um, you are the sun god Amaterasu, and you are in sort of like a fantasy Japan kind of thing. The whole game is sort of presented in like this sort of Sumie ink painting style. Ooh. Oh, that was lovely. And like the main sort of gameplay gimmick is as a god, you have powers with that you sort of use using the celestial brush so you actually like press a button you draw shapes so you can draw a circle you like can collect a power you can draw a circle with a line in it to make a bomb you can draw like a little swirl to make wind you can make plants grow the closest i ever got to that was playing the bakugan game on ds where you could do little symbols and it would do things and it's i love it it's such um, a beautiful game it's just a shame it's so long top Mm. five games pokemon emerald God, the, the music in that generation had, of Pokemon games. I had a weird Gen obsession in generation. primary school where I went through multiple weeks of, for some reason, just having a craving to play Pokemon Emerald. I, I, hit, I hit that every few years and play Emerald version, and it's fucking sick every time. I, I the never... Game slaps. I never... I, I, I just had this craving to play it. I'd never played it before. I played other Pokemon games before, but never Emerald. And so, like, eventually my parents bought me Emerald. Uh, and also... And also the uh, like the player guide to it. Do you know yeah. the old Pokemon oh, man, player old guides? Player guides was so good. I had a bunch of those for the Pokemon games. Um, and then I didn't even finish Emerald. I got to like. I remember the the player's guide that my friends had uh, was wrong about how you get uh, that it didn't know that Trap Inch evolved into. More fucking... no Flygon. No, into the one between uh, Vibrava, I think. Yeah, Vibrava. So it had Vibrava into Flygon, but it didn't have Trap Inch to Vibrava. So we just could not fucking figure out how to get a, tr- a flag on. That's as like so, a whole group of friends. Flag on so cool. As a whole group of friends, we were like, there is no way to get this. Did you get the Reggies? Did oh, you do Fuck all- yeah, I got the Reggies. Oh. <laughs> Having to like it was look so up good. Braille and all that just to like oh get this oh, weird looking cube. Truly some of the best fucking like shit they've added to a game of all time. And I think, okay, I don't think you can do that in the same way anymore, right? Like, New games come out, and you're like, okay, where do I get these special things? And you Google it, and it's there, right? And that's convenient, sure, but it's a little bit of magic you lose there, which is very sad. Because, you know, we... we, Reggie's were like, I didn't believe my friend about that the first time. And he's like, no, really, you get this... You get a fucking Waylord and a Relicanth, first and last. You go to this place, and you you use this move. And I'm like, you can't use that move. And they're like, just fucking trust me. And I'm like, all right. Right. That's pretty sick. And it turns out there's like secret fucking Braille Pokemon out there. I mean, the that generation is just thing. full of things like that because there's yeah. like Feebas as well. Like you have to find oh, the, the specific was, tiles. Those was, that was a little silly. I never no. managed to catch a Feebas. I didn't get one in the original. Like uh, not as a kid, at least. Like, have you ever had a shiny appear? I've never encountered a shiny I've in had, all my I've years of playing one Pokemon. One shiny. Uh, what was one it? shiny that was not an NPC's shiny, at least. Uh, it was a Linoon. No, two now. Sorry. Uh, the Linoon was the first shiny, and then I got a um, a Trevenant, the, the little dude that wasn't a Trevenant. More recent. Um, it's got... a little tree, a little ghost tree. Phantom? Mm, no. No, because that wasn't a Gorgeist, I think. It's a little pumpkin one. Trevenant's just a big spooky evil tree. Um, I don't think. know. Yeah, it's all good. My knowledge of Pokemon I might, is I might, sort of, be, might be Phantom as well. I'm not fucking sure. Gets extremely fuzzy after, like, Diamond and Pearl. So yeah, I go one After Diamond and Pearl? That's when I started playing. I am old, remember? <laughs> yeah, um... I did play the ones I still have... That. I don't have a thing that can play Game Boy Advance games. I have a Game sad. Boy. Um, Shiny well, Trevenant looks have, fucking sick, by the way. I do have, like, Pearl. I have X. I oh, have it y. was Phantom. You were right. I was I was so like immediately like no it's not Phantom it was Phantom. I have a uh, I got donated in my cousin's Pokemon game so I have like maybe the original blue version and red. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show Boy. you fucking. We might have Trevenant. them at my parents' house. This is but the coolest good Lord. Pokemon. Trevenant is sick. No, have you seen Shiny Trevenant? Hold on, I'm gonna throw my phone over once I find it. I'm gonna switch it up on my phone. I was gonna say I can look it up. 
All right, that's fair enough. That's probably Everyone easier. at home, Everyone search at home, up shiny, shiny Trevenant, Trevenant and yeah. then send it to Cam. Yeah, all right. Um, it had the worst stats I've ever fucking seen, because that was back when, like, Unisfer as a whole got really into, oh, like, Pokemon s- for a bit. that is a sick... Okay, that's really sick. Right? Mm. It's like red and white. It's oh, like birch an tree in autumn. Color it's a realness. It's a neat, neat fucking Pokemon. That's very cool. I feel like... Also, Garbage you look stats. at stats. I've never looked at Pokemon stats. Oh, look again. I was, it was, we, were, we were like getting into like a pseudo competitive league concept. It never panned out. You where, getting like, into EVs theme- and IVs? Yeah. We each had like a theme team we were going for. So I was going to go ghost themed. Oh, no way. That's really cool. I'm yeah. sorry. I, usually when someone starts talking about like po- competitive Pokemon, like EVs and shit, I like my eyes glaze over it. But as soon as you be like, themes? Yeah. Themes. As soon okay. as you make it like a little bit goofy. I. I think the only reason that that didn't pan out is because it turns out that, like, getting your Pokemon to have good stats is so much fucking work, or at least it was back then, and no one was willing to do it, but if someone was willing to do it, they'd have such a huge advantage that everyone was like, fuck this. (laughs) Don't, don't, like, actual competitive players just not do any of that and they simulate them in a separate environment? Yeah, PokemonShowdown.com. Yeah, apparently. Look, I'm not sure. I think that the official ones, they have to use real Pokemon. Um, I I think the newer games make it easy. We can, like, loan teams around and stuff. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Because I do... Okay, I like watching videos that go into strategy for things mm. I don't know jack shit about. Oh, fuck yeah. For sure. So, watching videos about, like, with, like specific Pokemon and talking about, like, whether they've ever been any good in, like, different, like, brackets I think of I've, I've seen the same YouTube videos you're talking about. What? And it's so interesting sometimes. Yeah. What are all of your favorite Pokemon? Oh, oh God. Typhlosion. Typhlosion's uh, a solid pick. Yeah, absolutely solid pick. At least that's just that's the Pokemon that like I keep going back to. I mean, so like as a, again as a kid, my my first game was Ruby. Um, it was like I was a hard Blaziken stan. Oh, um, Blaziken is pretty kick ass. That's I was such a big. Like, like, we're not counting mo- if we're playing. That's kid cam, right? If I we're was not such... counting legendaries. It's Blaziken I, as a kid. I was such a big Mudkip. And Swampert Mud- fan, a massive Skeptile, and I've become a massive Skeptile fan. Like, Blaziken's like the, the odd one out for me. Mudkip was cool. Um, I've always been a Fire Starter was fine. I'm, Yeah. I've switched, Trico- I switched between Fire and Grass, but lately it's just been Grass. Trico line's just not, not for you. It doesn't do it for Recent me. Fire Starter lines have been extremely mid, though. Yeah, I haven't played true. since. The last Pokemon game I played was Pokemon Sun, and I didn't get very far in that. I didn't even I get the I, first gym. I think I, I did beat the um, Shield, I think we had at home somewhere. The only only the Grookey line was really any good in that one. I didn't like Inteleon or Cinderace at all. Yeah, I tried the Inteleon. I think Mel played Cinderace, and it was like, yeah, it was it was fine. So, it was Blaziken, was but Blaziken. is it different? Um, yeah. Now I'm unable to think of a favorite anything. Oh yeah, I. Oh, I'm There's sorry too many. Of Apart them from now. Star Wars Battlefront Two, apparently. Yeah. There's too many Pokemon to really have a specific uh, my favorite. I would say Star Wars Battlefront 2 is my like hard favorite game. It might be. My f- I don't know. My favorite Pokemon is Absol. Yeah, all right. I, I don't know how I didn't this turn some into like, about an you. edgy goth kid. Um, the emo kid Pokemon. Yeah, I... This, this, is, uh, this lines up with your music I just taste. thought it was cool. It is, it it is was, very, like, 13-year-old cool. idea of the coolest It has, like, a giant seen. scythe coming out of its head. And, like... And shit. It's cool. What can I say? They made a Mega Absol too. Oh, it's Dublade. Dublade's my favorite because it's swords. <laughs> I do Look like what's it called? Dub- Klefki? Dude's just swords. Klefki's yeah, adorable. Right. It's not my favorite, but it's one that I would think of as like a Pokemon design that I enjoy, as well as. It is what's just... the teapot Pokemon? Oh, um, I know the one. I'm a little Pokemon short and stout. I know oh, in Japanese it's called hand. like Potades. Like, literally, yeah, it's no, a teapot. It's, uh, it's it's Poltygeist. 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 <laughs> it's so cute. It's just a little guy in a teapot. It's just a little dude. It is. And it evolves some sinistry. Like, the recent Pokemon generations have had some enormous misses, but they've also had just some great... I hate oh, that's been... people shit-talking new Pokemon designs. It's like, did you see the first 150 Pokemon? Ghastly, it's a bowl of gas. You Muck. fucking take that it's... back. There is no issues with Ghastly. <laughs> there is I no mean... issue. No, I'll no, admit, no. the first fucking generation of Pokemon had some absolute L's, but Cam... Ghastly is not one of them, <laughs> and I will fucking end you. Cam... Okay, that was just the first yeah. Pokemon that came to mind. Cam, my issue is not that the original Pokemon sucked. It's that... 
um, people have double standards like, oh, Trubbish is just a bag of trash. He's my bag of trash. Did you see Muck? That is just a good... Oh, man, if you want to feel sad, go talk to Merle about Trubbish at some point. Huh? Go talk to Merle about Trubbish. (laughs) I can't do it anymore. I get sad. I feel like the original, like, the earlier generations had a lot more just like, eh, it's okay. It's like a thing. Whereas I find with the newer generations, either I think that's really cool or I absolutely fucking hate it. What do you hate? I yeah, don't even you can't remember think them. Ratatat is a rat. Pidgey is a pigeon. Yeah. Ekans is a snake. Yeah. Like, what are you... <laughs> okay. The coconut okay. crab Pokemon. Uh, the, the... What? What's its name? <laughs> oh. Crabrawler? Oh, yeah. Uh, what's it? Yeah, the giant... The one that evolves into Crabominable? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> there's just some Pokemon... Like, no, I don't remember any of their it. names. I, love I just the look at them names. and I'm like, that's goofy. I don't like it. <laughs> I, I or love, I look at I it and I'm like, that's names. beautiful. The first gen, I think, from memory, did clean dodge, like, definite fur bait Pokemon, which was impressive. Um, Because those exist. That's that's a, that's a thing that happens. People get real those. weird about some Pokemon. They sure do. Fucking Gudra. Oh god, yeah, I forgot what? about Gudra. People get don't John, no, I'm don't do it, John. Gudra is all right. Gudra is the slimy dragon Pokemon, right, and okay. from that description, if you know anything about the internet, um, you already know slime. what the problem is. Um, Apparently, right, so- um, uh, the first thing that comes up is an an anesthesiologist in Philadelphia, which is in what state? Your mum's house. Liquid. Pennsylvania, so close. Yeah, right. Your mum's house is in Pennsylvania. Right, okay, if you two had a themed the gym team, what would it be? With like, uh, while you're thinking, so yeah, mine's ghost. I'm love, I'm love ghosts. I can't, can't not be ghosts. Why is uh, Mel's this... team is uh, guys? Guys. Yeah, Mel's got a, a team of dudes. Like throw and sork. Yeah, throw and sork are in there. Like fucking Hitmon. Conkledur. Conkledur is in there. Dudes that can vote, right? Guys Dude, that are just <laughs> dudes. Exactly. Like this is my team of regular human men, um, that I have captured. <laughs> Look at them go. That's that's um, Merlin's gym. Get you in get the to prison the, capsule. You get to the gym, and like all of the Pokemon in the gym are themed like guys, and they are <laughs> doing stuff that guys do, <laughs> and it's deeply uncomfortable. I want to say bug because bug are really cool. Um, the other thing I do is I just go there, and you just come to my house, and my Rotom would just like be in different machines so i just you just first the six different forms of rotom or whatever <laughs> i don't like type theming god Not any kind of theming i know a guy who had like a dog team was dogs. i would probably do something like that like maybe mustelids yeah I, uh, we get un- some linu we un- get some obstagoon an unknown team that just spells like you're a con <laughs> <laughs> won't even fit U R C U N T. That's that's the Urkunt. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I was not sure until now that we're allowed to say that on this podcast. <laughs> it's too late now. It's uh... just F U cunt. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> Problem solved. Okay, something I want to bring up while we're still on Pokemon is: Do any of you know? Um, no, the game, I think it's like Pokemon Coliseum Shadows DX or something. Okay, so I played Pokemon Coliseum, I never got Shadows DX. Yeah, uh, I played it on the Inter- Nintendo 64. Shadows yeah. DX? Not Shadows uh, DX. Pokemon Stadium? Yeah. Yeah, oh no, Stadium I pl- was... I played Stadium on the Wii, I think? I don't think there was Stadium on the Wii, so... No, so there Coliseum... definitely was. Okay, so Stadium 1 and 2 were like straight up pre-gen teams... Or you could like select teams, but it was just like a, a versus simulator. And yeah. It was, we used to rent it import- from the video shop. Yes! Yes! So you ah! couldn't save your team. You yeah. could import like Pokemon. Right. From. I didn't have like a fucking. Memory import chip from or where? Like your the internet DS. connectivity no, in your in Nintendo, Nintendo 64? 64? I didn't have a memory card, oh, this so I couldn't, I couldn't save shit. I think you could, in, you could, like some games did have Game Boy support, but you had to have the special cable. Yeah. I couldn't even play Donkey Kong because it needed that fucking weird yellow like expansion pack. Oh, the Rumble pack? Or something like that. No, it was like for the for the Nintendo sixty four itself. Oh, f- the one that actually gave it some more RAM. Yeah, I think so. Because that that thing had like the all the power of like. A fucking, oh like, no! It wasn't Pokemon Stadium. It was called Pokemon Battle Revolution. Yeah, I have not heard of that. I'm. It's sorry Pokemon to say. Stadium, Stadium, but for the Stadium Wii. and Stadium Two was sick, and then Coliseum came out on the GameCube, which my family got because we were like, "Man, Nintendo sixty four was the best console." And as the oldest sibling, I was like, "I think we should get the next Nintendo because they're clearly the best one." That was a fucking mistake. The GameCube, GameCube is lovely, but it's not 
It's not the PS2. It's no PS2, right? It's no Xbox. The uh, Xbox one was... The original Xbox was take or leave, but the PS2 really was the best pick. Yeah, oh, I had a PS2. It was very good. But uh, yeah, and Coliseum was not a, a stadium game. It was a hard story-driven game focused around double battles. And it was, like, technical. That game was really sick in a way that, as a kid, we did not appreciate. So... As a kid, we were like, why can't I just pick a team and fight, like, in Stadium? The thing about... Why'd they call it Coliseum? You are clearly, like, doing the bit. You're clearly working with the naming convention. I desperately want to play Pokemon Coliseum, specifically Pokemon Coliseum Shadows DX, because in my primary school, we had a game guide of that game. Because, obviously, we just had some books that, like, people had donated. One of them was the player guide to pokemon coliseum dx and i loved pokemon so i read that game guide so much that i knew like every encounter in that game coliseum was really good and the soundtrack also fucking slaps there is a couple songs from that that i am like still live in my head uh, i had my whole route planned out of like this pokemon the thing about coliseum I mean, you dx do you know how a, much... it was a very linear game for most of it or what pokemon i'd catch i guess um well, you, that's the thing you couldn't catch pokemon like the only Pokemon you could catch were Shadow Pokemon that other people had. It was all... Yeah, there was no you could wild only, Pokemon in it. Yeah, Pokemon Coliseum, you couldn't catch a wild Pokemon. You were in a place that didn't no have Pokemon, wild right? Pokemon. You could only catch other people's Pokemon. And only the Shadow Pokemon, which are fucked up, like, oh, I intentionally it was traumatized Pokemon. Pokemon. No, no, no. That'd be fucked up. It was like, there was this one fucking company making Shadow Pokemon, which are Pokemon that they basically, like, traumatize until they become fucking like hyper aggressive monstrosities filled with like dark energy the clones from the first pokemon movie but more no, evil more evil more like evil. The, well, they, they weren't evil they were just like fucking sad and like you'd catch it and it would have like boosted stats for a while until you like befriended enough that it can stop being a shadow pokemon and it can't level up until you do this um and you can't grind because there's no wild pokemon uh so you'd have to befriend these pokemon by like winning fights with them even though you couldn't level them up and then uh, eventually, yeah, you'd, you'd have them turn into a regular Pokemon. They'd like, level up like four times or whatever. But um, yeah, like shit was fucked. It was. It was really. Fu- it was a really, really neat game. Wasn't the 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 main legendary Pokemon Pokemon Coliseum Shadows DX was like Shadow Lugia? I never played DX. As I said I'm not sure. It, it was Shadow Lugia. That I'm lines up. Sure. I, that that um, rings a bell. That's that's the cut Pokemon was in covers like Lugia, but the colors were inverted. <laughs> in, in in the original Coliseum, you got the three dogs pretty quick. That was fun. Nice. Pokemon really has some great side games. Like, yeah. they, they're really side grinding games. Game Freak Pokey into Park. dust, making the main series games. So it feels mean to say, but I really wish they'd put out another Mystery Dungeon. Oh, they'll <laughs> yeah. bring it back. Mystery Dungeon, Pokemon Ranger, Pokey Park, oh, Pokemon Coliseum. Pokemon Ranger was dog shit. Let's not I really need Fuck to- you! <laughs> <laughs> I really Fuck want you. to get um, Pokemon Snap on the Switch because I used to love that. They'll... Like, I was terrible at it because I was like five, but I loved it. Ranger was neat in concept, but it wasn't good. Fuck you. Snap was fun. Um, OG Snap was neat. It wasn't necessarily, but no, you can't defend Pokemon Ranger, Fuck John. Fuck you, John. I fuck you. I love Pokemon Ranger as much as the next guy. It's not good. Though. I'm gonna sit here and think about my the lovely time I had in the three hour tutorial that was the school section in Pokemon Shadows of Almia. Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia, and you can't stop me. Pokemon Dun- Pokemon Mystery Dungeon what is, wasn't I as recent- good. I went through, not recently, it was a few it years ago now, better. but I went through Pokemon Ranger to get the fucking, uh, the, the Manaphy, I think it is, that you can only get through Pokemon Ranger, one per fucking Pokemon Ranger console. Something stupid like that. Fuck. Um, I suffered through that game. It's not good, John. I like circles. Um, Fuck we, off. We need, a, we need to wrap up the podcast. Final thoughts. I love doing final thoughts. I every time you do this to me, every, every time I say final thoughts, everyone's head goes blank. Wait, what did I have in my podcast? It's like first? you've just announced that what I've just thought was my final thought. Uh, the only thing you didn't take just a oh, city the, boy. The oh, fuck. The only thing I, we didn't talk what about is the fact that uh, disc. You can now see when people have made their Discord account. Uh, and I'm feeling very proud that I made my Discord account before most people, except Di- you, Fiona, who Discord made your- has reg dates? It has reg dates. Now, you made your Discord account four days before me. <laughs> four fucking days. February 10th, 2016 versus February 14th. Yet I just want to say- owned. Okay, final thought is, uh, what were you doing when you made your Discord account? Why did you make I a Discord account? I was making a Discord account. Why did you make your Discord account? I made um, it for my World of Warcraft raiding team. I was playing. Yeah, I was playing Dota two. We switched from Vent to Discord. 
Yeah, I remember TeamSpeak 3. That was fun. I was playing... I, I, I used TeamSpeak 3 recently, like, like this year. <laughs> because it's the only thing that TeamSpeak works with Armour 3. Speak. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, final thoughts. Final thoughts is, I'm going to go piss right now. Go piss, girl. He's taking off his headset. What the fuck? He's moved his mic. Final uh, thoughts, I have the superior reg date. Final... Th- uh, final thoughts, please, I'm begging you, I need to play Pokemon Colosseum before I die. I have to play this game. Simply download an emulator.